Hi! I finally have a new tutorial for you guys, and this tutorial is definitely for beginners. So if you're just getting started out with bracelet making, then this might be the tutorial for you. So as you already saw from the thumbnail, we are going to be making these super cute, super simple chevron bracelets. And I'm going to be showing you guys step by step how to make these from cutting the string to attaching it to your workstation to, of course, making our little loops and the pattern and then tying it off with our little braids. And before we get into the tutorial, I just wanted to quickly say that I'm getting really close to a thousand subscribers here on YouTube. So if you like this video or any of my other content, then feel free to hit that subscribe button. All right, let's jump into the tutorial. So here are the colors I chose for this bracelet. I'm going to be using DMC Embroidery Floss and I will leave all the color codes for these colors in the description if you want to find them. Now I've just gone ahead and chose four colors. You can really choose as many colors as you like. Just keep in mind that the more colors you choose, the wider your bracelet is going to be. And that also applies if I wanted to break up these colors more, um, say with like more of this white, then this is going to be an extra row. Now I have five rows even though I'm still only using these two colors. So I hope that makes sense, um, but for this tutorial we're just going to be using four colors and four rows. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap all of this floss onto these bobbins and these are just um, tools I use to keep my space a little bit more organized, a little less cluttered. I don't wrap my string as much as I should. Um, but it's a good practice to get into, so I'm just gonna do that off camera really quick. Okay, so now that I've wrapped all of my embroidery floss on my bobbins, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of play around um, with the order of them, see how I want my colors to go. And I'm think I, I think I'm happy with the order here. It's gonna go white, dark blue, pink, and then light blue. And during this stage, you're also gonna wanna figure out what color you want the loop of your bracelet to be, and the loop is going to be um, what helps secure the bracelet to your wrist. So for this bracelet, I think I'm going to go ahead and choose white. That's going to be the color of my loop. So that just means I'm going to cut the white floss a little bit longer than the rest of them. So now you're going to want to go ahead and cut about two meters of each color, excluding the white. You're going to want to add about an extra 15 centimeters onto the white, just because we're going to be using it to create our loop. So I've cut my other three colors and now I'm just going to leave um, some extra slack for the white and that's what we're going to use to create our loop. All right, so now we have all of our string cut. We're good to go. So now I'm going to attach all of my string to my workstation. And to do that, I'm just going to fold it in half just to find the halfway point because that's where we have to start. So I'm just going to fold these in half, make sure all of these line up and of course I have my one string that has lots more slack at the end and I want to keep this end towards me so I'm gonna hold this end and then where that fold is in that halfway point that's where you're going to secure your bracelet right on the edge of your table your desk or where you're going to attach it to your clipboard oh, and we're just gonna put it right on the edge here okay actually just put another piece because sometimes it'll slip out from under the tape and that's super annoying. We don't want that. Okay, so what you should have right now is about 100 centimeters of thread on this side in your lap with, of course, the extra long piece. And then on the other side of the tape on your table, you should have the other 100 centimeters except all the ends will line up on this end. So now we're gonna start creating our loop. So I already decided that I wanted my loop to be white. That's why I cut the extra 15 centimeters on the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a series of forward, backward knots. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take my white and make this kind of four shape over all of these strings. And then I'm gonna pull the string through on the other side and then just pull tight like that. Now to complete this knot, we're gonna finish it off going backwards. So we're gonna create a backwards four using our white and pull it through on the other side and pulling it tight like that. So now I'm just gonna repeat that process a few times doing my forward and backward.
and forward and backward forward and backward now as you can see we are using the white floss to create these knots around all these strings, giving it kind of like a little encasing, like a little cocoon for them. Uh, so we're just gonna keep repeating this process. So I've made 11 forward backward knots here and I honestly think that that will be a good size to get our loop started. Since I'm only using four colors, this bracelet isn't going to be very big anyways. So this is the beginning of our loop. All we really have to do is pull this side around and we can see the loop already starting to take shape. And just keep in mind what I said earlier, if you are going to be using more than four colors or cutting more than four strings, then you may need to make your loop a little bit bigger just to accommodate um, how much wider your bracelet is going to be. But it really just is a trial and error. You can just kind of keep twisting this and seeing if it's big enough, if it's kind of the size you want it, but I think that's good. So I did 11 forward backward knots. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove this tape. And then I usually just use my finger to kind of get that nice circular shape for the loop. And then I just kind of pick whatever side looks best to me. It doesn't really matter what side is on the front or on the back. So then I'm just going to secure my loop right on the edge of my table, just so I can still access these strings over here and making that nice horseshoe shape like that. Some tape ready here. So once you've secured your loop onto your table, uh, we're gonna go back to the order we want our colors to be in. So the way we had ours, it went white, dark blue, pink, and then light blue. So that's the order I want my colors to go in. So now we're actually gonna start making our teardrop shape for the loop. So since I want white to be first, I'm going to do a forward backward knot with the white over the other three colors I have. So we're gonna go forward and backward. And then I'm just going to put the white to the side for now. So then I want my dark blue to be the next color in line. So I'm gonna do a forward backward knot with this dark blue over these two strings that I have. So forward and backward. Then I'm just gonna set the dark blue to the side as well. And then I want my next color to be pink, so I'm gonna do a forward backward knot over this last string I have here. So forward and backward. And then we're just gonna put it to the side as well. So now we're just gonna switch gears for a second. We're gonna hop over to the other side. We're just gonna put all these to the side for now. And now we're just gonna mirror what we just did, except instead of doing forward backward knots, we're gonna be doing backward forward knots, which means we're just going to do what we just did, make the knots we just did, but we're gonna make them um, in the opposite direction. So we're actually gonna start backwards and go forwards. So I'm gonna start with my white uh, because I do want this to be symmetrical. I'm gonna go backwards over the three colors I have on this side and then forward. And then I'm going to put my white to the side. Then I'm gonna grab my dark blue and I'm going to do a backward forward knot around these two strings. So backward and forward. And then I'm going to do a backward forward knot with this pink string over this last light blue. Backward and forward. 
And then to finish off my loop, I'm actually just going to do a forward knot with these two blue strings. I'm gonna be tying them together, and then that's how we're gonna finish off our loop at the top here. So I'm just gonna do a forward knot, like this. And it's a little tricky. It may wanna like pull apart on you. It's just all about your tension, and don't be afraid to undo um, this middle one if it doesn't turn out the way you want it to, um, because it, it can be a little tricky. I think I'm happy with that. All right, and now we are ready to move on to making our actual chevron. And we have successfully created our teardrop loop. So now to start the chevron, I'm gonna start with this far left white string, and I'm gonna be creating a forward knot over this dark blue string. So we're gonna go forward and forward. And then putting that blue string to the side. Then we're going to, again with our white string, make a forward knot over this pink string. We're going to go forward and forward. And then putting the pink string to the side. Then we're going to grab our light blue and make forward knots with our white string over the light blue. Forward and forward. And again, we're going to switch gears. I'm going to go over to the right side and I'm going to be making backward knots over each color this time. So backward over the dark blue, backward, backward knot over the pink. Put it to the side, backward knot over this light blue. And then in the middle here, I always find it best if you do your middle knots always going the same direction. So for this kind of joining part here, when I'm joining my colors together, I'm always going to do a forward knot. And I just find that helps keep my bracelet a little bit more straight. And there we have the first row of our chevron bracelet. You can see that white arrow pointing down. So now I'm just gonna repeat that process, except now we're gonna start with this dark blue on the far left. And then I'm gonna put it over this pink one using a forward knot. So we're gonna go forward and forward. Put the pink one to the side. We're gonna grab this light blue one and do a forward knot over the blue. Put it to the side. Grab this white string. Do a forward knot with the dark blue over the white. And we're gonna jump over to the other side. And again, starting with this dark blue. And of course, doing backward knots all the way down into the center. So backward knot over this pink. Then a backward knot over this blue one. backward knot over this white string and then again just joining the two dark blues in the middle and I just want to make sure I'm always doing forward knots or always doing backwards knots as long as they're all the same all the way down it'll just make your bracelet look a lot more tidy and you're just gonna keep repeating this process all the way down your bracelet. So now I'm gonna start with this pink over here. I'm gonna do a forward knot over this light blue. Put it to the side, a forward knot 
over this white. Forward knot over this dark blue. And then we're just going to jump to the other side for a second and do backward knots all the way down into the center. Backward knot over the light blue, backward knot over this white. Backward knot over this dark blue. And then joining these two pinks together, I'm going to be doing a forward knot. And then lastly, just taking our light blue, doing forward knots all the way into the center. So forward, forward. Forward, forward. Forward, forward. And then jumping over to the other side and doing backward knots all the way into the middle. Backward, backward, and then of course just joining these two light blues with a forward knot in the middle. So then as you can see our colors are back in the order we started with. We're, gonna, we're just going to keep repeating this process all the way down until our bracelet is at the desired length. I usually make my pattern about six inches long, excluding the ties at the end, but we will get there. I just think that having this teardrop loop is the perfect way to set up your chevron because the teardrop is already making the shape that the chevron is going to be going in anyways. And just making sure that all of your knots are going in the same direction on each row is really going to help your bracelet stay nice and even and straight. So here's what we have so far. I'm just going to sit down and keep working on this bracelet and then we can finish it off together. Another tip is when you're getting further down your bracelet and you find that you're getting farther and farther away from the table, you may see that your bracelet is getting um, like a little wonky or starting to kind of want to go sideways is just move it up on your workstation. So I'm just going to move it up like this, make sure that I can still access the strings I need to um, off the edge of the table. But then I'm just going to lay it down like this. And this is also going to help your bracelet stay nice and straight. So now I can just keep going ahead with my forward knots on the left and backward knots on the right. So now I can just go ahead and keep working on my pattern. And this may take a little while. This is definitely not um, a quick thing to do. This may take about an hour or so, depending on how big your bracelet is. Obviously the bigger it is, the longer it's going to take. Um, and with practice, it'll come faster.
Alright, so I just finished making the pattern for my bracelet. It's about six inches long. It's kind of tucked in under my desk here. Um, so now I'm just going to make the ends for it. I just want to show you guys how I do that. Um, you could just braid these uh, just the way they are. I mean, just kind of double one of these up and then just do, um, you know, your regular braid like that. But I'm going to show you guys how I do. I think it just kind of makes the bracelet look a little bit neater and it's really simple and easy to do. So you're going to start on the left like you normally would, except this time instead of starting with the far left, we're actually going to be using this blue string to create a backward forward knot over the white string. So we're just going to go backward and forward. And then we're just going to group these two together and hold on to them. We're going to grab our pink right here. We're going to do a backward forward knot over these two strings. So backward and forward. And we're going to put that in our little pile there. And then with the light blue, we're going to do a backward forward knot over these three. Then as you can see, it just kind of gathers all of our string and it just tucks it right into the bracelet. We're just going to go ahead and do the same on the other side, except this time we're going to be gathering our string with forward backward knots. So we're going to use our dark blue over the white. We're going to go forward and backward. And then we're just going to put these together, grab our pink string, do a forward backward knot over these two strings. And then put that in our little group. And then a forward backward knot with the light blue over the last three. So now you've actually grouped your tails together and now it's just a little bit easier for you to braid them. They're all starting at the same spot and then I'm just going to do a regular braid and this is what we're going to use to tie our bracelet onto our wrist. So once your braid is just a couple inches long, you can just go ahead and secure it with a knot. And then of course, just do the same on the other side. All right, and then once it's about the same size as your other tie, you can go ahead and tie it off. And then of course we can just cut off the excess string we have here. And we can put this into a scrap pile, use it for another project later. And there you go, there's your chevron, chevron bracelet. So here's the finished product for that bracelet. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on really quick. So you can actually just take one of your ties and put it right through your loop here. And that'll just be easier to put on yourself if you don't have a friend handy or if you just don't have friends like me. There we go. Beautiful, super cute, super simple. And I kinda, I kinda like these like thin bracelets. A lot of the normal bracelets I make are really like thick and chunky, so this is kind of a nice change. But having said that, you can really make a chevron bracelet as wide as you want to simply by adding more than four strands of floss like we had at the beginning. Just keep in mind, if your bracelet is going to be super wide, you're definitely going to have to make your loop a little bit bigger than we made it at the beginning. And to do that, you're just gonna make a few more forward backward knots before you reattach your bracelet to your workstation and get started on the actual chevron pattern. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Let me know down in the comments if you have any 
questions, comments, or concerns, and I will do my best to answer any questions you guys may have. Um, also, feel free to tag me in any chevron bracelets you make using this tutorial. I would love to see them. I'll also link some other tutorials I've made down in the description below, as well as some other videos you guys may enjoy. And a bit of a side note, I've been streaming a lot on Twitch lately, so if you want to see me play some video games, then definitely head over there. Give me a follow. It's a fun time over there. I play a lot of The Sims 4. Dylan and I have been playing some Red Dead Redemption 2. We're going to be playing some Mario Party, GTA 5, maybe throwing it back with some older like Sega games, Nintendo games. So if you're into that, then definitely hit me up over there. And I will leave the link for that in the description as well. All right, I'm going to go. Dylan and I are actually about to get our vaccines like right now in like an hour. So I'm super excited about that. And I will let you know how that goes uh, on Twitter. I'll keep you updated and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everybody.